This is like what the New York Assembly is doing to Andrew Cuomo. Yeah! <laughs> it's like what Don Lemon did to Chris Cuomo by questioning his symptoms. Are you sure it's not in your head that you're not being OTT about this? It's Rachel and Rhea and we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So guys, welcome to our bonus video this week. You get a bonus video and you Ooh. also get a live stream on Saturday. So you are just spoiled. Now is the time to get on board and subscribe and get to know us. We're going to kind of go through some things that we need to go through. Um, the situation that happened in uh, Perth, Australia, with Amy's passing, has given us some time to think. Um, so, here's the new deal. We are going to try really, really, really hard to take down Reddit illness fakers. So, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about Amy Lee Fisher, who was a YouTuber who had a... Um, channel about her battle of chronic illness and she sadly passed away on April 1st at the very very young age of 23. 20 no 23 because she'll be she'll be yeah, 24 so almost 24 yeah. and we were huge fans of hers and we are extremely saddened by this and in her honor we would like to share with you what reddit illness fakers is and why we don't approve of it, and why they are bullies, and why you should help us appeal to Reddit to take down this group. It has been taken down once before, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, they just brought it back again. Yeah, so we need to get it taken down permanently, and we're going to walk you through the facts, and we're going to explain them to you, and we're going to explain our opinion based on the facts, and we think that you will agree with us, and we're just going to present our case to you. So with that, we'll, we'll take, take a look, look at Reddit Illness Fakers. So what's the goal of Reddit Illness Fakers? I don't really know, other than to make fun of people who are over the top, try to figure out who might be um, faking it. But you know, that's not for us to decide. No, to me, it just seems like their goal of their group is to torture sick people until their tragic and early death. Who made them? judge, jury, and executioner, because as we all know, Amy Lee Fisher was a huge topic on Reddit illness fakers, and she was afraid of them. She changed one of her Instagram names. Yeah, and they were quite cruel to her. They did believe that she was sick. However, they thought that she was sick because of something that she had done to herself. Now, we do know with a little research that her sister and her mother both also had eight, uh, forms of EDS as well. Yes. And it is not up to some group on the internet to decide who's faking it or not. That's not appropriate. No. I mean, who's, who are you to decide that? You are, you may be doctors, but you do not see Amy's entire story. Some of the things they accused Amy of were unnecessary surgery, having both of her hips replaced. And they said that she was too OTT and that she made her chronic illness too much of her life. And she just made herself come across as too sick. Oh, I'm sorry. Does it make you uncomfortable when someone's sick? I mean, it must be, if it's so uncomfortable for you, it must be so even more uncomfortable for me, the sick person. Well, yeah. And I mean, you know, they accuse her, you know, of using, not using all her TPN. Well, guys, TPN... It's just the way it comes. Yeah. So, uh, they thought that she was too OTT in every way, and that's what she chose to have her channel about because it was something important to her and something she had to deal with every day. It was a lifestyle. And guess what? Most YouTubers are pretty OTT. Most celebrities are. 
So Amy had several different chronic illnesses. She had, and I apologize if I'm saying these wrong, I am not a doctor uh, or nurse. She had hypokalemic period, periodotic, periodic paralysis, and also known as HKPP, gastroparesis, and postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, also known as POTS, which affects your heart, and MCADS, which is mast cell activation disorder, and fibromyalgia, and HEDS, which is Ellis Donald syndrome. A form of them. Yes. One of these are the 13. I think there are 14 forms now. Yeah, and she had some others that I'm not sure of. But she was a very, very sick girl, and we do believe her story. Well, like with everybody, they claim that who is actually sick. There are some girls who are legitimately faking, but we don't know who they are. Uh, they claim that no one could be as sick as she was. So the only way for this to happen is she must be doing it to herself. However, due to modern medicine, she was actually able to live longer than people who had these problems in the past. Modern medicine has come a long ways from even 30 years ago from when we were young. And they can do so much more and they can keep really, really sick people alive longer. Yeah. Whereas someone in the past, like 40 years ago or 50 years ago, would not have lived to be in their 20s. So this is something new for us to experience. Yeah. I mean, there was another one that just passed too. Mm -hmm. um, her name was Just My Jeans, uh, Cassandra Cassandra. Uh, sure, also mm -hmm. just died. She was on, on illness bakers, but she also had a lot of these same issues. Yeah. Also, with the invention of the internet and the rise of social media and YouTube channels and Instagram and stuff like that, you get to see the inside lives of people who are sick, whereas in the past, they just stayed home and you ignored them. You, you didn't see you didn't no. see people who were sick. You didn't see their lives. You didn't see that they wore makeup or tried to be glamorous and stuff like that. Yeah. I think the thing is they're trying to prevent is they're trying to prevent another Gypsy Rose scenario. However, the Gypsy Rose scenario was simply that. I mean, she was being abused by someone. She was being mistreated by her mother, and her mother would, you know, pressure doctors. And we didn't even know how old. She didn't even know how old she was. I mean, there was just a lot of problems with that. No, so with Gypsy Rose, and if you aren't familiar with the story, we're not really going to go into it, but... You know, I think um, Christina Randall has a... I believe so, and we'll link it below. You should go check out her video on Gypsy Rose. So Gypsy Rose was tricked into believing that she was sick and even needed a feeding tube by her own mother. And her mother tricked the doctors into giving it to her. So she fooled everyone, including doctors, and it... It wasn't someone pretending to be sick. They were, you know, it's like Munchausen by proxy. That's what it was. The one thing that we hear a lot over on Illness Fakers is Munchausen by internet. Yeah. And they call them munchies, which is inappropriate. And we do, we do have the right to question people's stories. And you always should. If look at the facts and make sure that everything lines up and everything is okay. You should do that. I fully support that. However, you, you they take it too far. These people were wrong. They And Illness Fakers has been wrong more than once, and they have bullied people who don't deserve it. There are three women who died on it now. Jackie, two fed doctor, I think her name was like Tara or Tara mm -hmm. or something, and then now Amy. And I would say that, as disturbing as it sounds, their deaths exonerate them. Yes. And, guys, first of all, you just need to be very careful who you give your money to. Do not throw your money at every single sob, sob story. You are under no obligation to do that. No. Amy never asked for any money. Never asked for a cent. I mean, you could donate to her channel to keep it going, but you yeah. can't even to our channel. You can't do that. most YouTubers do that. But the thing about it now is that now with the invention of Trikafta, we're going to start seeing CFers live longer. What kind of long-term damage Trikafta has, we don't know yet. No, so as we were saying earlier, we, we've never seen people this sick live this long. Yeah. And it is, it's, it is a little horrifying to see people having surgery after surgery, like 
Amy and like people with cystic fibrosis and it's like, oh my God, that's, that's no way to live your life. But doctors can just keep you going and going and going. Well, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see the long-term effects of Trikapta on people with cystic fibrosis as they get older. I'm very curious to see what happens. The one thing that about them is that they, they get half the story. Mm. They get half of it right. They miss the part where, you know, the depo loop run up here somewhere that's an endo cure or help. Um, they don't believe it can make you even sicker, but yes, actually it can. That is a proven fact. Mm -hmm. They think you're supposed to use all your TPN and that's up to you and a doctor. Then you are not someone else's doctor. Yeah. And if, again, if you're going to be criticizing these guys and calling them OTT and calling them out as liars, you got to get the facts right. Yeah. And they're just not getting the facts right. I mean, go watch our endo videos where we talk about some of the cures that they have for endometriosis and the depo loop run and stuff like that, it can make your bones more brittle. It has been known to make girls lose their teeth. And it has been known to make girls suicidal. Which is yeah. And there is this one girl that they are evaluating and criticizing, and she went on the depo and shot, and she ended up in a wheelchair, and they're like, there's no way that's possible. You didn't even do any research about the drug that she took. And a lot of times if they would say something, I will Google it and I will find out that they're making up stories. Yeah, and they always want to make sure they do it on a down low so that the girls don't feel harassed and you're not allowed to talk to them. And it's just like under this the table thing. And they have all sorts of weird, creepy rules on there. May I say something? This is like what the New York Assembly is doing to Andrew Cuomo. Yeah! <laughs> It's like what Don Lemon did to Chris Cuomo by questioning his symptoms. Are you sure it's not in your head that you're not being OTT about this? And that's Don Lemon things never going to go away. So just no. go up and get used to it. And it's, it's just, it's disturbing. I'm not saying we should never question people's story, but if we have a group dedicated to keeping people in line because, you know, we are the internet chronic illness police, then you better be right. Well, yeah, and you can't just be, make up your own facts. Like, facts, 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 facts. Use facts. But you just look like a bunch of jerks that are being cruel to girls who are dying. And I think there was a guy that they used to do, they used to rip on, rip on for a while, too. Yeah, it's just it's mean. And I'm sure that some of these people are doctors and nurses. Like, I'm sure they are. They are. They're not the doc, unless, unless you are, you know, person X is doctor. You shouldn't be talking anyways, but, you know. Don't you take a Hippocratic oath to do no harm? This is the opposite of doing no harm. You're harming people psychologically. And what are they? They question dogs, and they question, you know, um, wheelchairs. And they're like, well, yes, but there's the ambulat There's also something called ambulatory wheelchairs. We've talked about that before in, mm -hmm. able one, in our first ableism video. Uh, we need to encourage people to tell their stories, even ones that sound ridiculous and unbelievable. It is the only way to fight for a system, fight against systemic inequality, and to fight for a cure for our horrific diseases. If you don't see what they are and you're not made uncomfortable about it and you don't feel bad about it, you're never going to go out of your way to find a cure. Just like when we talked about in our uh, criticism of Dr. Fauci video about endometriosis and Dr. Fauci, etc. The only reason that he even looked into HIV and AIDS was because people were protesting. And that should never come to that. That that That's very wrong. Yeah. But uh, if you want something done, you gotta shout it from the rooftops. And guess what? Us sick girls, we can't go out and protest. We can't... No. We can't amass the numbers because... Our immune systems don't let us fight back. And it's not our fault. And if someone says, oh, I have X, you would do well to just at least try to believe them. Mm -hmm. Never ride someone off that you don't know. No. Because you don't, the thing is, is that we used to watch a lot of housewives in this house, in this, in mm -hmm. here, and they always used to say in reunions that, you know, we don't see the whole story. No. And I know that the um, Cassandra who just most recently died, she was known for uh, having an underreaction to her symptoms. And her doctors would go in there and, and look at her after 
she'd been complaining about something for a while and they'd be like, why weren't you screaming in pain? She's like me when I almost died. Yeah. And I think that we get programmed to not cry out and not say I'm in pain and keep saying it until someone listens to us because we don't want to be a nuisance. We don't want to be a burden. We don't want to be interrogated by people on illness makers or people like them. Well, yeah. <sighs> And we do need to, we do want to be a place of positivity, a place where you can feel safe. You can tell your story. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with the fakers then? Because there's always going to be somebody like Gypsy Rose. Somebody's going to weasel their way in and start taking advantage of people and being ridiculous and spreading lies. Well, I mean, just like in the case of Gypsy, that was a very rare thing. I've never heard of. No. I don't, you don't hear about that roll off. No, you really don't. I mean... If you get addicted to being sick. Why? Being sick is not. Most people don't want to do that. I'm very, very, very rarely you're going to find someone who wants the attention you get from being sick. Yeah, I mean, just like when, you know, the different stimulus, the different stimulus bills were passed. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes through a snafu, someone is going to get one that they're not supposed to. And, of course, there's always going to be someone who needs, who needs help that doesn't get, um, who don't need it or deserve it. But there's, the other side of the way, but there's the other side, too. And the majority of the people who are doing, who, who are doing these things need that help. Mm -hmm. I would say over 99% of them. Yeah. So, and you need to stop listening. Stop listening to everybody else and listen to yourself. We can't take away social media or people who are chronically sick to share their stories just because a few bad people weasel their way in. That's just wrong. Because then you're taking away our voice. Yeah. Illness fakers doesn't want people to be OTT who are sick. Oh, I'm so sorry. Does their illness make you scared? Remind you of your mortality? Make you feel panicked? Worried about your loved ones? Make you feel guilty? Because... You start feeling survivor's guilt. Imagine how sick people feel, especially people who are extremely ill. Yes, and yes, some people are very, very, very sick and very fragile. And it is possible to live and be medically fragile because of how amazing our doctors are. Yeah, down below, we will be linking our Why Body Dysmorphia is Dangerous blog. Mm -hmm. Because you can do that to yourself, but someone else can also do it to you. Like, there is an XM radio host who will not be quiet about the fact that we all need to lose weight. And, no, that person needs no. to be silenced and needs to be retaught because that is not okay. That's very um, ableist of him as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times we go out to eat and we're gluten-free. And the person taking our order says, oh, I would just die if I had to eat gluten-free. You're lucky I can even come in here and get, spend my money here and eat anything at all. Because there are some people who cannot eat. No. And that's through no fault of their own. And sometimes we really, and I really, really want not just illness fakers, but everybody to go through and say, Hey, look at this behavior I have, I'm exhibiting. Am I working out too much? Am I going insane? Am I going to work out till I drop dead? Having a group like Illness Fakers is like having a ruthless mob that's looking around for, you know, like the Salem Witch Trials or for whatever. To blame someone for the nursing home deaths in COVID. Or for the big bad uh, beast, you know, kill the beast, kill the beast. And it creates this mob mentality where people just follow the leader and hate, hate, hate. And it's not what we need right now. We need things to bring us together and not bring us apart. So I advise you that if you're a member, if you're a member of this group, please leave. And uh, yes, we are chronically sick. Yeah. And sometimes maybe we're a little OTT with it, but this channel, part of it is about our journey with chronic illness However, we don't qualify to be on Illness Fakers at the moment because we are not big enough of a channel. But if we ever become big enough to get on there and they decide to rip into us, we will 
serve them to the full extent of the law, and we will complain constantly to, to Reddit, and we will talk constantly and hear about it. We are not afraid of you. No. And we stand up to bullies, and how dare you? Don't, don't be a bully. Be a friend. Because sometimes if you just get to know someone, you will learn that maybe they're not so bad after all. Take a long, hard look in the mirror and remember that very few of us make it to old age without getting some sort of chronic illness. So you may be on there making fun of someone who is sick and OTT or that you don't like, but in 20, 30 years, that person could be you on there. And you could be a subject on there, a topic. You know, and there's another subreddit called Molly Burke Isn't Really Blind. <sighs> there actually is one called that, and we'll link that down below, too. Oh, my God. There, she has a whole subreddit. Did you know that? I knew that there were people who questioned it, but I didn't know there's a whole there's subreddit, a whole subreddit oh my God. called Molly Burke Isn't Blind. That's not okay. And the reasons that they give are ridiculous. Like, do you not think that people are really blind? Well, she can still she can still kind of see, but that what <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. We'll link it down below. Oh my god, we gotta take that. To, we we gotta get rid of that too. Yeah, I mean, like we explained on here, some days are better than others for us because it you can get chronic illness flares. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may have to spend a few days in bed a week, but then. You can go for two weeks, just go, 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 and then you just, like, crash. I mean, sometimes you can be like, yeah, let's make plans. I'm ready to go. And then and then you can't anymore when the day comes. Yeah. So we're also going to link Molly, Molly Burke isn't really blind on that. Because that also has to go. Reddit, we love you, but you do have quite a toxic environment there that other platforms would never tolerate. No. So we would just ask you to please reconsider having these guys in these having these groups on your social media platform it's not okay so if you agree with us let us know below and how do you think that we should go about handling this should we make a petition and send it to reddit would that work or how are we going to do this we get just spreading awareness and spreading knowledge helps. Would a lawyer like to get it? We would get a lawyer. Yeah, involved. is there any lawyer that would tackle this for free? Just a question. Or, or if you are big media and you stumble across this, hey, reach out to us and we will come on your show and we will talk to you about this and we'll let the whole world know. About both of these subjects. Oh, yeah. Because now we're going to talk about both of them. Yeah, big media. Please help us. Yeah. You guys, we're going to end the video here because there's no point in continuing. No. But if you guys liked this video, make sure that you give it a giant thumbs up. I would advise against clicking on the thumbs down button because, you know, the reasons you would do that would be because you are A, a member of Reddit Illness Fakers, Molly Burke Isn't Blind, or, you know, just think we're stupid or think chronic illness is fake, smash that subscribe button down below. We are so close to making it to 400 followers. And we need to get 1,000 to get this channel monetized. We are so excited at how quickly our channel is taking up. To the right of that, you will find a bell. Give that bell a big ring. So that you will be have a 50-50% chance of notify of being notified when we go live or when we post a new video. We usually post videos Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. However, this is a bonus special video. Yeah, and we're doing this in honor of Amy and anyone who has lost their life to chronic illness. We are so saddened by this and our hearts go out to your friends and your families and if you are in social media our hearts go out to your loyal fans and um i guess we'll do what we can to make you feel loved uh it's nobody can take their place though and we wouldn't even pretend that we could because it's just not possible and we're we're gonna get through this together we are and i didn't know Amy personally, but I believe that she would want us to. So make sure you're sharing 
these videos with your friends. And thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.